Thank you for attending this webinar. We've hosted this because there seems to be still an awful lot of confusion out there within the trade as to what the new conditionality clause from HMRC actually means. There's a few people think it only means uh, self-employed people. There's a few people think they don't need to do it because they've got a URN number. There's a lot of confusion. So I've asked uh, Gary Jacobs of Easy Tax to come along as he is the uh, accountancy expert and we've attended a HMRC and Institute of Licensing webinar already where we've answered a lot of your questions and posed a lot of your questions to HMRC. Uh, so Gary is going to go through a presentation and ex uh, explain quite a lot of it to you. Um, once we've done the presentation, then we'll open it up for questions and answers. Please feel free if you've got any concerns, any worries, any problems, or simply you just still don't get it. Please feel free to ask us and we will make it as simple and as clear to understand as we possibly can. It is important that you understand what this is. This is not a council instructed matter. This is HMRC. Councils don't have a choice and neither do you. OK, and without further ado, I'll uh, hand over to Gary. Gary, if you'd like to take over, please, and present your presentation, I'll put myself on mute and turn my camera off whilst you're doing so. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello, everybody. Um, Gary Jacobs here. Um, my practice is called Easy Tax. And just to give you a very brief bit of background, um, I've been servicing the, the private hiring and taxi trade for over 25 years. Um, so um, we look after drivers, we look after operators, we do uh, a lot to do with work engagement, we do loads and loads and loads of tax returns in, in the thousands. Um, so we've been doing this for a long time um, and we've always known that there's an element of the um, drivers who are unregistered. Um, so I'm going to talk about conditionality, please, uh, and exactly as David said, I'm going to try and cover as many of the points as we can do, but we are here there is no such thing as a silly question. It, 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 it hasn't really been pushed out as well as it could be. Um, and there's a lot of misinformation about it. So we are here to answer every and as many questions. So um, quite simply, let's have a look at why it came around. HMRC is bringing, it's a very simple tax check, a declaration when you apply for and renew your licenses to drive taxis and private hire vehicles. Now. We've just had a piece of information come out on January the 7th because at one stage we were told it would probably only be for people relicensing, but they've now brought in a, a and we'll talk about it a little bit later, a kind of separate declaration for people that are actually licensing for the first time. So it, it, it does encapsulate everybody, but in slightly different ways. Um, and this is why it came about. I was actually involved in the original um, uh, committee, HMRC committee consultation, uh, as far back as 2016, um, and then it was brought to formal consultation in 2019. So it's been around for a long time, really, but you know, it's it, it's kind of crept up on us in a way. It's coming into play from April this year. But the important thing to realise is if it's about people relicensing, it's something that, again, we'll talk about a bit more, but it's something that you've got to do when you're relicensed. So it's probably got a three year run in because there may well be people in April 2000 um, that are, you know, taken on the licence by if they want a one year, some on a three year, depending on where you are around the country. Um, so it's going to have quite a slow rollout. But the point about it is the sooner that you uh, register, the easier it is and they will be opening the registration as it says there from the 7th of march so what is it really about well we kind of know um most recent tax gap uh is showing 2.6 billion of tax revenues to the hidden economy um and the hmrc want to get it back uh, i think it's fair to say and it's something that david and i laughed about when i first produced it uh, the 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 private hire and taxi industry is only a little bit of that tax gap <laughs> you know, uh, um, I don't think we're for it all. But the point about it was the decisions on applications for these licenses are conditional on a tax check. So the word conditionality about what it is, is basically saying that without this tax check, you will not be able to be licensed. And that's both operators, private hire and taxi drivers. Funny enough, also 
uh, metal dealers, scrap metal dealers come into this as well, but we, we don't, we're not worrying about it in this uh, form. So um, the process looks, let's look at the process for somebody that's actually renewing their license. Um, a lot of people have spoken about the fact that anybody that is self-employed will have a UTR, a unique tax reference number. Um, uh, and I think very early on, one of the ideas that I spoke to HMRC about, I said, why don't you just take people's 10 digit numbers? Unfortunately, it's the HMRC and they've gone about it in a different way. And I'll explain there's a reason for that, because what you're actually doing is declaring to them as opposed to just giving them a number. So what you've got to do is come out of your licensing site. And as David quite rightly said, this isn't about your licensing authorities. This is a governmental thing. So it's across the country. Every licensing authority will have to look at how they implement it. But the basis of it will be this. You are going through your licensing process. You come out of your licensing process. You go on to an HMRC website and we'll talk about a little bit more how you access that um, you make these declarations they give you a number not your tax reference number not your utility but they give you a number and then that number is given back to the licensing authority um, which they will use to confirm that you've completed that tax check and then and this is HMRC's words not mine the licensing body your licensing body will then reach a decision whether to license you basically they've been told if you don't get a tax check number you won't be able to complete the process so for people with a new license, um, it, it's not quite done in the same way, but we learned um, earlier this uh, uh, earlier this month, and it says here, you must confirm that you are aware of your tax responsibilities when you apply for a taxi driver, private hire, or private hire vehicle operation license for the first time. So what you're saying to them is, I know that I've got to be a taxpayer. And the reason why they, it sounds a strange way to do it, doesn't it? But the reason why they do it in that way is that you have made a declaration there that they are aware if they come and find you and you're not registered um there is no way i mean I, I don't know if you know this but you actually get fined more if you're unhelpful there is an increase in the fine structure of hmrc for uh, not being helpful so by they will be able to come to you and say right you told us that you were aware that you're supposed to be uh, self-employed, that you're supposed to do your, your tax return, and you've chosen not to do it. So you will be treated in a different way than somebody who didn't know. So now, what they're really taking away the conditionality is that ignorance is no defence. And this is probably the bit that everybody wants to see. Um, and as you see on the top, it says a prototype because they haven't issued the final one, but be fairly sure. What type of license are you applying for? And we've got an example here, drivers and taxis and private hires. How many years ago did you first get a license for this activity? So you can see that if you've been registered for um, to pay tax for five years and your license is eight years, potentially they could ask more. I mean, please also remember that this is a declaration. It's up to HMRC if they want to follow up on it, but this is the process that people have to go through. Um, and one of the things I'm here to tell you about is there is a fix. There is uh, something people can do. There is a way to minimise uh, 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 minimize it. But I think it's really important that people realise that it's not uh, just about giving a number. I think that's what a lot of people come to. Oh, do I give my UTR? As I said before, but no, you're not. There's these questions. How long was your most recent licence valid for? Um, and you can see we've, we've put some test answers in. What was your tax status for work carried out using this type of license? Well, you know, they don't want registered for self-assessment. I was self-employed, is what they want to hear. Um, and it also brings me on to another thing, which is people that are employed, employed drivers will have to do this, but you would say that you're employed. That's all. So they've still got to do this. They've still got to um, learn how to, they've still got to open a government gateway. They've still got to go onto this site. So operations have got to be aware that they've got to take any, those that have employed drivers, um, have got to make sure that your guys can go through this process to get their tax check number. And that's a, it's a big deal. So it means that operators, uh, you, you know, you, you, you can't get away without getting your hands a little bit dirty on this. Um, and then finally, did you include income you earned using this type of license in your tax year? So you can see that um, it's, it's uh, uh, um, don't be, it's not as scary as it, as it sounds, but it's also um, not a straightforward declaration of your, of your tax reference number or anything else. They are asking you to declare your status. So that's what everybody asking is, are they out to get us? Um, this is the HMRC's quote. HMRC is clear the majority in these sectors already pay the tax that's legally due. 
are committed to levelling the playing field for compliant businesses, so those who meet their tax obligations aren't disadvantaged or undercut by those who don't. So really what they're saying here, and it's very hard at a public forum to, to say this, but at the end of the day, they just want people to register. That's what they want. I mean, I would say to you that you need an accountant to do it because those who aren't registered have a little bit of a journey to go on. But at the end of the day, if you look at the reasons behind this, they just want to know they've got a registered trade. Um, and they've made this very clear. Uh, this has been a part of all of the stuff that they've put out. So let's look at what you need to do. If you're a registered driver, you're already a taxpayer, um, you've got to get a government gateway. Um, now, what we do, with what, accountants will, what accountants should do for you, and we certainly do for our clients, is that we open up a personal tax account. By opening up a personal tax account, which is something that we help you with, it's not a big deal, we know what HMRC knows about you. So it, it's a registration process that we do automatically for our clients. I think getting a government gateway directly is not the hardest thing in the world. Um, but also, you will need to know when you first got your licence, the length of your most recent licence, and how you pay tax on the income you earn from your licence trade. Um, once again, these are, if you are registered, these are pretty easy things to do. For operators, really, if you want to look after and keep your drivers, you need to incorporate tax training into your boarding. Um, and obviously, I wouldn't be here unless I had a a dog in the fight. So we actually have a lot of literature that we give. We have um, training videos, we have pamphlets, we have leaflets, we actually have people going out doing tax surgeries. We know that that what we've got to do is, is help operators with the onboarding process. So we're there to help the driver. Um, I, I just think that operators have got to start looking when they onboard drivers to give some help and some advice and a bit of handholding um, during this. And of course, for unregistered drivers, and I think it's important, whether you're registered or you're an operator, it's important that everybody knows this. Because we always, we, if any of you guys on at the moment are registered, you know, you, I, I know what it's about. It's about fear. You know, it's about fear of what's going to happen to you. So it's really important. And we're going to talk about it for a little while. And the reason I'm talking about it as well in this forum is so that you all know other unregistered drivers or unregistered drivers, if you can take something away from this. You need to find somebody that's used to back duty and failure to notify cases. All it means is when you first go to ACMRC with having not registered, there is a system to do it. And if you stick to their system, they're good as gold. I've always said the same thing. If you choose to go to uh, the HMRC, it's a much better uh, experience than if they come and find you. It's as simple as that. Um, and for us, it's about, you know, holding the driver's hand, being there for them. It's it's never, a lot of people come to the system, and we're doing quite a few and have done for the past 20 years. They always say the same thing. Once they've actually spoken to us and realised what goes on, it's like a weight lifted from people's shoulders um, because the reality is never as terrible as what's going on in your head. We'll talk about that here. So if you're not registered, three things to remember. First thing, don't panic. You know, it's not, not the end of the world. The, the, the idea is the HMRC want you to register. So they're going to make it easy to, for you to come into their house. Um, you're not alone. We deal with this a lot. You know, the idea is we're here to help, we're used to it. We've worked with thousands of drivers. Um, and, and to be honest, we're not just saying it. There, there is the problem we've seen before. It just always tends to be growing in people's minds doing it. And I think what happens, once you get to one or two or three years, it's a fear of what, what's happening. But it's it's not always about the money. It's about the, the HMRC or government department. They want the registration. So here's the truth. There's really no such thing as tax prison. You know, it, it, it's it's about what the revenue wants to, to, they want to get you into their system. Um, as I said before, if you go to them, instead of them finding you, it's a much, much better experience. You can actually find for not actively helping. Um, and from our perspective, this is what we do, especially as trade accountants, which is why um, we've got our uh, uh, partnership with M MPHTA. Um, thank you very much indeed. And David and I, um, you know, we we've been servicing the trade for a long time. Uh, we're there to give information. We're not there just to, you know, we don't just want people to come on board. It's nice if people do, but we are very open with the information there to help people. It's not called tax prison. It doesn't exist. So from our perspective, we'll give people the unlimited advice and support. We deal with all the tax issues involved. Um, bookkeeping is something that people worry about. And it's really funny because when I say bookkeeping, I'm talking about um, uh, uh, invoices in a bag or in your glove compartment. We're used to dealing with that. That's what we do. 
Um, recharge 300 pounds plus VAT. Uh, um, oh, sorry, that's actually a year. That's completely wrong. It's 30 pounds including VAT a month, and it's 300 pounds plus VAT a year. But, and this is a good bit, so you can ignore that, if you are a, or want to become an MPHCA member, uh, we are taking £60 off in the first year. So basically, to come on board with us as a member, it's £25 a month in the front year. So we basically um, recharge £300 of VAT, it's £30 a month. If you're related to, have been to see this webinar, have had anything to do with the MPHTA, but what we really want you to do is join the MPTH as a member, because that's how you get the benefits of us, you save £5 uh, a month in the first year. Thank you very much indeed for your time.